Hello and welcome to Two Man Meta. I'm Mondo Spanner. And I'm Artie Kaz. And on today's episode of OOP, we are breaking down the card anatomy of the X-Men trading card game. So Let's first go. off, we're going to start with character cards. There are two types of character cards. There are the heroes, which have a grey corner. And there are three types of bad guys that have the coloured corners. So when you're playing these, you need essentially the team value at the bottom has to add up to 30 or less for your X-Men team. So that's and this value in this bottom right-hand corner. You get to take two of the villains. And it doesn't matter which two you pick. So obviously we've got the card names for both at the top. Oh, yeah. And then we have the mutant ability in the text. And mutant abilities come in three flavours, A, B, and C. Yeah. This is the timing of the effects. Uh, these pop off in combat, and we'll show you that in the tutorial video. Uh, you have a health uh, in the grey circle, the yellow writing. So that's pretty straightforward. When you take that much damage, you die. Uh, then you have three different colours of attack. So you can attack in the red, blue, and green. Uh, for your heroes, or your good guys, um, you need to use mission cards to attack. So let's talk about the mission cards. Yes. Because that is everything you need to know for the, the hero heroes. Ones. And another thing to quickly note is they're very easy to pick out. And if you watched the um, Warhammer Champions video, you'll be able to see that this fulfills one of my loves of card games is we have different backs on the champions or heroes and the actual cards for your deck. So they stand out nice and easy. I just wanted to say that because I made such a big deal of it in the champions videos. <laughs> yeah, no, it, is, it is really tricky, you know, when you're building a deck to stack four separate cards on the top. You know, they're different. Like, I, I, I feel your pain. It's a burden. Everybody has shuffled their characters into the deck by accident in some game or another. So, <coughs> Not me. So going on to the missions, <laughs> we have missions for each colour. This shows which colour you're attacking with. So in the top corner, it just shows you. Red, blue. You're using the red attack, green. the blue attack, or the green attack. And obviously that then marries up with these. So you have a danger room number in the top corner of these, which is what turn you can essentially play it on. So there's no resources in this game. You're just limited by the turn. Yeah. Um, as you can see by the cards, you get a bonus to your damage. So... Plus eight or plus three on the red ones. Well, it's a it's a it's a it's a bonus to the amount of dice you roll, isn't it? Yes. Well, it's a bonus to the number of your attack, which then is influenced by the opponent's strength, and then you roll dice equal to the difference, essentially. Yeah. So, I really like these mission cards because, like, they're nice full art cards for everything straight away. Like, yeah. the layout's really nice. The mission it says clearly on the side. The danger room is very clear. The bonus is very clear. And then you just get some nice artwork. And on the cards with text, because some missions have bonuses to them, it's just a nice, simple little box at the bottom. Yeah. You know, they're all very straightforward. I mean, the... Very um, pretty cards. In the starter set, you don't get very many low danger room cards, do you? Well, in one of the decks, the deck that I was running to uh, learn the game... Um, I was running the Wolverine deck, and that's very low, whereas the Professor oh, yeah. Xavier deck was very, was very high. very high, wasn't it? So one of them's focusing on the early game, and one of them's focusing on the late game, uh, which is really interesting. Uh, the last thing to point out on the cards is, if you remember Magic and Pokemon cards, it's got the old Magic symbols, so Circle for Common, Diamond for Uncommon, Star for Rare... That's all pretty simple. That's the card anatomy for these is really, really straightforward. And then we can move on to the momentum. So missions are what you use to tap a character to attack. Momentums, you can tap an additional character to add on. So for example, if we look at this one, we've got a sucker punch, uh, which we can only play when it's turn four or beyond. And roll red strength or less. After the dice are rolled, do one red damage to the villain. So when it talks about coloured damage, that just means damage, basically, because this is a red card, so it does red damage. If it was a blue card, it would say do, you know, an amount of blue damage to the villain. 
And then here we've got Finishing Blow, which is a Momentum plus one. And it's also a really nice card because you can play it on turn one because it's got Danger Room le level there of one. Again, you get these in all three colours to use as bonuses. And, and you just simply have common. to have... Oops. These are both common. You just simply have to have a uh, power in that colour on the X-Men you're attacking with. Dead simple. Um, then we have the lightning cards. So these are like instant spells. So before you're attacking, you can play out a lightning uh, by tapping a guy. So if you have a green card like this one, uh, you can tap a green character or a character that has green to play this ability. And you can do exactly what it says. So in this case, remove one damage counter from one of your X-Men. So, the, the, so these ones don't have to necessarily be done when you're attacking. However, you do have to tap one of your characters to do it. So therefore, if you tap one of your characters to do it, then you can't use them when you're attacking. Yeah, so you attack as a group, so... but any tapped cards aren't attacking. So you can basically trade off using the lightning abilities. Uh, and this case, we we'll uh, have one take it. that has a character on it. So... If you use Psylocke, you essentially get an extra bonus. Yeah. So and if, if you, you use... don't use Psylocke, you just get the lower one. Yeah. So on this one, if you use Psylocke, if the danger room level is one or more, you may tap Psylocke to play this card. So, I mean, even though that says danger room level three, you could play this on turn one. <clears throat> and then its ability is untap one of your X-Men. So she just kind of has like a... She basically makes it better because she... If you've got her on your team, then you can play this on turns one and two. Whereas if she's not on your team, then you can only play this on turn three onwards. So we also have missions that have these on. So this is a Wolverine mission. So you can use it on anyone, but if you use it on Wolverine, you get an extra bonus. Yeah, so if you read here in the Wolverine text box at the top, it says only Wolverine may attack this turn. However, triple his red strength at the start of the attack, which on Wolverine is pretty good. Uh, and then it says only the X-Man... You tap to play this card, may attack this turn. Double his or her red strength at the start of the attack. So you see, if it's Wolverine, he's tripling his attack. Uh, whereas if it's any other person, they're just doubling. Okay. And finally, we have the power-up cards. And these stay in play. And these, you'll only get this reality shift in the starter set. And uh, you'll only yeah. get one of it. So this is the only one we've currently used. Um, we won't use any of the other ones until we're talking about the tutorials and stuff, just for ease of reference. But these stay in play like enchantments in Magic and really alter the game. Again, they've got a danger room level on each different one, so it's when you can play it. And that's pretty much all you need to know about the card anatomies for these cards. I know this is a really short look at the cards, but they're really, really simply laid out and very straightforward. You know, Wizards knew what they were doing when they made this game, and you'd expect them to in the 2000s after having so many years on Magic. Only five or six, though, right? Because this came out in 2000, right? Uh, I believe it was 2000, 2001, yeah. Yeah, so they've only, they're only four years in. Well, that's... No, seven? That's no, 92, seven. eight. <laughs> that's, <laughs> Counting. <laughs> that's still a while, and I think they did a really good job with the layout of these cards and how straightforward everything on the card is for the game, like... We've had, had to explain very, very little. No, that's true. So it's dead easy to pick up. And the gameplay is dead easy to pick up as well. When you when you sort of see the uh, how to play video, you'll be like, oh, that's actually pretty cool. Um, however, there is an interesting aspect of it that I know quite a lot of Magic players don't like. So that's quite cool. Yeah, so the other thing to talk about is there's no keywords in this game, essentially, other than character no. names. So we won't have a keywords <laughs> video for this. There is a lot of dice rolling, though, in combat. That's what Magic players don't like, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so we will show you how the dice rolls affect everything when we play the tutorial. Lovely. Right. Thank you very much for joining us. <laughs> and uh, we shall see you in the next video. Bye-bye. If you enjoyed this episode of Two Man Meta, don't forget to like and subscribe to stay up to date as we release multiple episodes each week. If you would like to help support the channel, check out the links in the description below, as well as links to our social media pages. Thank you for watching. See you next episode.